Welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton, and welcome to a transfer rumour review show where we are going to be discussing a potential incoming or outgoing at Everton this summer. Loads of people talk of to going on at the moment. The uh, rumour in question for this one is Jesse Lingard, of course, who's been touted around to Everton a few times in the last couple of years, and obviously had a loan to West Ham where he did well, and other than that's not done anything really at Man United, so... Of course, a Man United reject's been linked with Everton. It's part of the of it, isn't it? And we've only got ourselves to blame to, for being linked to these players all the time because we've got a track record of buying them. Um, but Jesse Lingard, you never know, might be able to do something with Everton, but that's exactly what we're going to discuss. Terry, what's your take on the link with Jesse Lingard? Would you have him? I think on a straight player basis, then yeah, there's like a massive, you know, creativity deficit in the team. You know, where our our Spanish, you know, friends, ex manager, um, got rid of James Rodriguez and Luca Dean, and obviously we know Luke um, Gilfy Sigurdsson's no longer at the club. So the chance creation and the you know the the sort of um, creativity side of the squad is just sorely lacking. Um, so Jesse Lingard would help in that regard. If he came into our team, he'd probably instantly be our most productive player in that in that respect. But it's not as simple as that. There's a lot of other things that go with it. Like for example, the big one is his wages. Like he's a free agent. He's come from Manchester United. He's going to have he'll be he's going to have huge wage demands. He's probably already on a huge wage at um, Man United, and because it's a free transfer, he can demand that. So. You know, the the report says that he's asking for 150 grand a week. It's like, no, we can't give that to anyone, let alone someone like Jesse Lingard, who's 29 and is coming towards the tail end of his career. And as much as he'd be an improvement on what we've got, it's not the right move for Everton, not, not by a long shot. Yeah, so I'm pretty much in the same boat. I think it's also like, we can't really afford to be, like you say, doing those kind of transfers anymore. We need to start looking for the more smarter acquisitions. You know, you could probably get a player on like a third, maybe even a quarter of his salary who could do more or less the same job. Mm. I mean, the, there could be something to be said for like the James Tarkovsky type of deal where, you know, the understanding is whether it's true or not, I'm not sure that rather than give him huge, you know, over a hundred grand wages. We sort of like, you know, twisted it a bit where he's on around 80 grand a week, but he got a, a large balloon payment up front uh, of a signing on fee, which sort of takes his deal um, into that territory over the value of the whole contract, but he actually isn't listed as being over a hundred grand as an earner because we're trying to get away from that. If you could do that with Lingard, then, you know, that might be something the club would look at, but how many, right, you know, you could do... manager, so, you know, that's like... Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm better the football manager than Everton, no, honestly. It's in games for a reason, isn't it? But I, I just think, Linga, if we had an already established and secure team of young players, say we had, you know, the team was full of players like, you know, Patterson, Branthwaite, Anthony Gordon, and they were all established and all they needed was that little bit of extra security, that little bit of, not security, that little bit of experience, that little bit of a know-how that you can just bring in to complement them, like a Tarkowski, then you could see there being good sense to go in for um, um, Jesse Lingard. He'd be someone who can, you know, add something to the attacking side of the game. But we're not at that point. We need to be building a team like that. We need to bring in young players and the 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 sort of core of the team needs strengthening first before we start looking at players like Lingard. So it's it's just a big no from me. Worries, um, but like I think that's that's definitely like you say that's the wrong move for us. Also, where does he where does he play? I mean, he's he's that's the, the other same. thing I was just going to ask: is where does he fit in? I know you say he is more, more creative than a lot of our players, but what's his actual position and what's the is he going to fit into whatever Lampard wants? Well, we don't know what formation Frank Lampard's going to go with in next next season. Obviously, he's been a bit. Um, of a wartime prime minister, hasn't he? Since he's took control of Everton, like he's just been doing whatever works and like making, you know, calls based on the situation. Now he's got a little bit of time to prepare. He's got a window to recruit in. 
he's got pre-season. He, he can pick his preferred formation, his preferred style of play when everyone starts on zero points. So we, it could be that Jesse Lingard fits right into that alongside some of the other players. But right now, you look at Lingard, and even if he would add to the team, you're like, well, we've also got Deli Ali, we've also got Alex Awobi. At what point are we get? Uh, are we starting to look like we've got three, four number tens again? Like, can you fit them all? I don't know. Lingard can play on the right, and and uh, Awobi play can play on the left. But it's just you have, have, have to see like the say. team. You have to see the team that he would go into, and where was he fit? It could be that he's got a, a something in mind, and Lingard's the ideal player for it. But at the minute, we can't see that. I certainly can't anyway. Neither can I, like you, like you mentioned there. I think that's why I'm sceptical about Lingard. I don't think it obviously would improve the team, but I've already got a lot of players who played the wood roles and you don't want to be overspending on one area and neglecting others. We know we've done that yeah. before and paid a high price for it on many an occasion. If he lowered his wage demands... Then I think it'd be, you know, I think we'd be in with a good shot. Okay, we haven't got the European football of West Ham. We haven't got the, you know, promise of future riches like Newcastle. But it, silly as it sounds, the location is uh, that the club is in is a big like feather in the cap for a player like Lingard. Like he's local to the area. He's from Warrington. He's a Manchester United, you know, academy player. So he's Northwest lad. He wouldn't have to move out. I'm sure he's got commitments here that he. I'm sure I heard one time I've got Man United fan friends like he's got like you know if it looks after large me- you know group of family members in the northwest and that might be appealing to him but if he wants to come to Everton he's got to lower those wage demands he's got to get under that hundred grand a week um, threshold and that's that's effectively going to be a pay cut for what he was at at Man United so I just can't see that. Going to be about to pay half I reckon. <laughs> well, it's one of them like a few years ago. Everton would have been all over this and we would have been giving him a massive contract and we'd be regretting it like down the line. But he might price himself out of a, of a deal, West Ham, and Newcastle might walk away and Everton are going to walk away and then he might be, he might have to lower it anyway. But I think if he wants to stay local, uh, Everton is a good move for him, but he needs to play ball with Everton and realise we can't afford, and we certainly can't afford in the stricter sense, we can't afford culturally to still be given out these contracts. We've got to change. If he wants to come in, it's got to be within a new wage structure. On the note of culture as well, obviously he's got a bit of a reputation for sort of slacking off at times, doesn't he? You know, what's well, to stop him doing that at Everton? Because he's got plenty of no, players, no, no. he? I've never saw that on the pitch. He's always been quite um, quite good for his work rate on the pitch. Like he, you know, he's defensive side of the game. He works hard on he always, you know, like, Always contributes. That's why Ali Gunnar Solskjaer liked him in the early stages of his of his reign. Off the pitch, we all know he's a bit of an a uh, he's a bit of a kid, isn't he? But honestly, I think I think that horse has left the barn. I think that's more. I think that's most players now. You, you know, like the TikToks and the you know the, the social I'm media. Not against, I'm, I'm not against TikToks. It's more that he can sort of blow up and cold as a player, though. Yeah, that's true. But I, I think when he's hot. He's hot enough to play for Everton, but when he's cold, I think he's, he's less cold. The Everton. I think I think he's less cold, less often than some of our other players. I think that I, I recognize you know, a realization of our, where we are and what our teams like shows that we're not above having a player like Jesse Lingard. It's just the intangibles around it. It's the it's the financial aspect of it that makes it un, untenable. If he if he had reasonable you know, wage wage demands, then I think we should we'd be all over it. But it's a non starter. But that I think everything else you can sort of accommodate. You can't accommodate those wages. I think for me, I'm just scared about taking potential Man United rejects after Schneiderlin. Yeah. Don't want another one of those. And we, we should be looking at building a new team. This is a it gets an overused expression, but it should be a reset this this summer for the club. New manager, new director of football, possibly a new change in ownership coming up. But just change the culture. No more big contracts for aging players who were like fell foul or rejected by other clubs. You could um, you know, if someone really fits in then you can make an exception. But I don't think Jesse Lingard was really integral to the team we want to build. I think it's just because he's available on a free that we're linked. Because, you know, again, it's just like, the, he's look at Takore, useful player, being, you know, being good for us. But now, we're getting to the point where 
we're down the line now and we're not going to retain any, we're not going to recover any money for them. So we've just got an older player who we've just got to have hanging around and got to, got to get these players younger. You've got to get Jesse Lingard, the new Jesse Lingard at the age of 20 or 21, the old, the original Jesse Lingard. It's you, you, You're just buying think, players that you're going to release in three years or four years and not get any money back for. Exactly. There's, there's enough reasons. I think we've pretty much made our point here that we just don't want this to happen. Um, people may differ, but yeah, I think we'll go we'll online under this one. Is it a no from you, Teddy? Yeah, it's a definite no. No from me too as well. Uh, you guys who are watching, uh, let us know your opinions, obviously, on the Lingard room. Would you have Jesse Lingard? Teddy and I wouldn't, but you know, it's each to their own. Let us know, drop us a comment. Um, give this video a like and subscribe for more content. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching on the Toffee Blues.